Hey guys and welcome back. Well, today we're going to be looking at curve warp deformers combined with mesh networks. Now that sounds pretty boring, right? Well, what if I told you that we're looking at how to flip cars, do barrel rolls with jet fighters, and how to animate snakes? Bit better? I think so. Let's check it out. Here we go. Okay guys, we're going to start off in Photoshop this time for the simple reason that I want to show you guys a couple of things that you can do with this method. Okay, I want you to understand completely how powerful this is. Okay, so to start with, let's say you modeled a fighter jet and you want to have it uh, do a barrel roll. That is something you can do with this. Okay. What if you modeled a snake and you want it to uh, be animated that it moves like an actual, actual snake and you have no idea how to approach that? You can do that as well. And the coolest of all is what if you want to do a car flip? Um, uh, I'll show you. Okay, let's jump into Maya. Here we go. Okay, guys, we're in uh, Maya. I'm just going to turn on my grid here for a sec. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with a path. Now, whether that is a path for my fighter jet, my snake, or my car, that kind of depends on what you want. But what I'll do is I'll go to Create, Curve Tools, CV Curve Tool, and I'm just simply gonna start to click on my grid and create a random path, okay? And of course, you will make it custom to your need, right? I'm gonna hit Enter, and as I do that, you can see that my path is completely flat on my grid. Now, I don't want that because that's not cool. So I'm going to right click, go to control vertex. I'm going to drag select a couple of these and I have my soft select on. So hit B on your keyboard, to turn that on. You can hold down B and left click and drag to make that impacted area bigger or smaller. But I'm going to do something like this and I'm going to hit W and I'm going to start to move that up. I'll move this down a bit just so we have a slightly more random path. Okay. Let's see what we got. All right. So let's say this is the path that we want. Okay. I'm going to hit enter here. We're going to right click, go to object mode, select it. And I'm just going to turn off my grid so you can see exactly how uh, this path is set up. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to introduce an object. Now I'm going to create a simple uh, polygon uh, cube. But this could be your plane, your car, your snake. And uh, with that selected, I am going to uh, shift select my curve and I'm going to go up to deform and I'm going to select curve warp. Now, as I do that, a couple of things happen. Uh, my object is now attached to my curve. And also in my attribute editor, I now have a tab called curve warp one. Now, if I go in and I go to this offset right here and I start to move that offset, you can see that my object is following that path exactly. Okay. Pretty cool, right? And what is fun is that if you go a little bit further down, you got this curve rotation set up. You can actually, and I'll even go in a bit closer so you can see that. Hang on. We'll just go in here. And you can see that you can use that rotation value to rotate that. You're probably not gonna to see too much going on at a twist there because we don't have a lot of subdivision, but if this were a longer object, you would, okay? Now, this isn't the most spectacular part just yet, and we'll get to that now. But even with this, you can, uh, for example, have your car attach to that path, and you can follow a controlled uh, flip if you wanted to, okay? But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get rid of this guy, and we're going to introduce a mesh network. Okay, so let's create a new object, uh, create polygon primitives. Let's do a uh, sphere. That's fine. We'll hit R, scale it down a bit. And with my sphere selected, I'm going to go up to my mesh tab and I'm going to create a mesh network. And there you go. All right, so I'm going to select the first one. I'm going to shift select my curve and once again I'm going to go to deform and select curve warp and as I do that you can see that all of them have now been placed on that path now as before I can go in to uh, my curve warp tab here and I can play with that offset and as I do that you can see that they're following that path all the way in and out and I can still do that rotation and twist, but you won't see that because they're spheres. However, if I now go into the mesh uh, distri distribution tab, I can tweak the number. I can 
move that way up until it's basically a solid object, as you can see. And with that, I can now go back into my warp tab. And you can see that it now looks more like a solid. I can go back into my mesh. I can bring it way down to basically one if I want to, like so. And we'll go back in again just to show that it still works. And um, the other thing that I can do, I'll just uh, increase those points here, is I can go in and I can move the curve points while I'm uh, animating, okay? So what I'll do is I'll go into that warp again, and we're somewhere around here. So because this is basically live, I can right click and go to Control Vertex, take any of these vertices, hit W, and as I move that, you'll see that the curves and the objects will move along with it. How cool is that, right? And as you can animate these curves, you can make the most amazing movements, right? So I'm really, really interested to see what you guys come up with using this method. It's very powerful, as I mentioned. Hopefully you like this video. Uh, if you did, hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future videos. And please, please, please put links below how you use this technique, okay? Well, thanks guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.